Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 187. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is my new Thundercats Ultimates figures from Super 7. Now these figures have been a long time coming. It was kind of a long, rocky road to get here, but they're finally in my hands. So yeah, I'm going to show you my two newest figures um, in just a few minutes. But first I want to give you just a quick little bit of background on this line. So back around 2000, late 2008, early 2009, Mattel started producing their Masters of the Universe Classics figures, which were based on the old 80s Masters of the Universe toys, except these ones were geared towards collectors. They were bigger, they were more articulated. You know, Mattel had sculpted this new, bigger, muscular body, um, and then they kind of reused that same basic buck, that same kind of mold, and kind of used it across the line so there was nice compatibility amongst all the figures which, you know, is a throwback to the old Master of the Universe line where a lot of the figures used the same couple of bodies across the whole line. Uh, anyway, I was a big fan, I still am, of Masters of the Universe, and uh, I loved the Classics line. Like, I'm, I'm currently collecting the Masters of the Universe Origins figures, and I'm buying some of the Revelations figures. Um, I liked the original toys, but the Classics line is the pinnacle of Masters of the Universe figures. I don't think it's going to get any better than those figures. They were awesome. And uh, anyway, as that line kind of started to wind down, Mattel had done most of the major characters from Masters Universe. They uh, thought they would kind of do a spin-off line into Thundercats. Now, uh, they were going to use the same basic buck, the same body, so they would be, uh, you know, you, you could use them and display them next to your Masters of the Universe figures. They would all be compatible. Um, and uh, I don't know if they called it Thundercats Classics or not, but uh, anyway... So this was many, many years ago. Like, I want to say, I don't know, eight years ago. I don't know. It was a long time ago. Um, and I wasn't really interested in the Thundercats. I maybe should have been because I grew up in the era when they were popular. Uh, you know, I was a kid of the 80s. So I grew up loving Transformers, G.I. Joe, He-Man, wrestling, uh, you know, Battle Beasts. I don't know, all that 80s toy lines. But there was just some that kind of... I missed out on, I guess. You couldn't couldn't love everything. So some brands like Silverhawks or Thundercats, um, I just didn't pay that much attention to. I think I watched the Thundercats cartoon here and there, but I have no real distinct memories of it. Uh, I didn't own any of the toys when I was a kid. So I was not like super excited when Mattel announced that they were going to start doing Thundercats figures. But I thought I might get maybe the main characters, namely Lion-O, who is the heroic like lead, kind of the He-Man of Thundercats. Um, and then Mumra, he's the main bad guy, the Skeletor, if you will. And I always loved this guy, Slythe, the uh, the lizardy henchman of Mumra. So those would have been the figures I, I would have gotten back in the day. But anyway, those first wave of figures that Mattel put out, which consisted of Lion-O and three other characters, which were not Slythe or Mumra. Anyway, they sold out super quick. It was near impossible to get them. And then that was the only line, like that was the only wave that Mattel ever put out. So if you were a diehard Thundercats fan and you thought, oh, wow, they're going to go super deep on this line, just like they did with Masters of the Universe, which had, you know, hundreds of figures. Um, yeah, they went four figures deep and called it a day, essentially. And again, I didn't really care. I didn't really mind that I missed out on the figures. I might have bought them if they were more readily available, but whatever. Um, but then uh, Super 7, which is a smaller company, they took over the rights to do the Masters of the Universe figures from Mattel. Like They licensed the property, and uh, they said they were going to continue on with what Mattel had done. And then they also said they were going to continue on with the Thundercats line. So there was a several-year gap here in between when Mattel gave us Wave 1 and when Super 7 was going to pick it up. And with Super 7, they do their figures kind of made to order. So they give you a month or so window to say, you know, pre-order this. And then it's going to take us a year or so to deliver the product. So uh, everybody, you know, Thundercats fans were excited. Um, I was mildly interested. I thought maybe now is my chance to get those couple of figures that I wanted. Um, and I think a lot of fans were disappointed when Super 7 showed their Wave 1 figures were just going to be redos of the same four figures Mattel had done. So they were giving fans an opportunity to get the figures they missed out on. And they did make some improvements. They added some new weapons, some new accessories to the figures and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, when they put those figures up, the only one I was interested in from that initial wave was lion -O. So I pre-ordered him, and I waited a really long time to get him. But he did finally show up a while back. 
I've had this guy for, I want to say, more than a year now. Um, and I've reviewed him ages ago. And he's a cool figure. He's not perfect. Uh, I broke his little thing off his belt right out of the box. Uh, I, I couldn't get his other head on. I probably could if I took a hair dryer to it and loosened it up, but it was on there. It felt very delicate and I didn't want to mess with it. Anyway, cool figure. Um, but before I even had this guy in hand, they announced Wave 2. And there was two figures from Wave 2 that I was interested in. So there was finally Mumra, the big bad guy. And there was also one of the other heroic characters, Tigra. And I thought, well, he looks really cool. This is not a guy I'm, I thought I would buy, but I really liked the look of him. So I pre-ordered him as well. Um, and then more time chugged along. And then they put up Wave 3 for pre-order. And Wave 3 finally had Slythe in it, who was the character I would have wanted most of all. So I pre-ordered him. And this was the only figure of that wave. Every wave has like four figures in it. Um, and then uh, I think they even put Wave 4 up for pre-order before they had delivered any of these figures. And with Wave 4, I pre-ordered uh, one more figure named Monkey in, who's another one of the kind of the henchmen like Slythe. Um, and so Super 7, people were kind of getting pretty uh, like anxious about these figures, but Super 7 said, look, COVID happened. We ran into issues with our factory in China. Um, so Wave 1, they got produced and they got those shipped out. So that's why I got my Lion-O. But then Wave 2 was really delayed. And it's been so long now that I kind of forget what they had told us. But it was something along the lines of, they were a, they're a small company. They had booked a factory in China to do their figures. And then some of the other factories in China had shut down because of COVID. And then Mattel had their Jurassic, or Mattel, yeah, I think Mattel had their Jurassic Park license. And the uh, they were a much bigger, you know, uh, more valuable, uh, you know, IP to be working on. So the toy comp the factory that Super 7 had hired to do their Wave 2 figures, they kind of put the Super 7's Thundercats on the back burner and they focused on the Jurassic Park figures and Super 7 couldn't get their molds back from them or whatever. I don't pretend to know exactly what happened, but Wave 2 got really held up. So Super 7 opted to find a new factory for Wave 3 and 4. And even though those still took a while, they actually got them produced before Wave 2 was done. So I got Slythe here um, last year as well. So I've had him for several months as well. And so he's Wave 3. And I still did not have my Wave 2 figures. And then, just a uh, little more than a month ago, maybe, I got my Wave 4 figure. Um, and then, a couple weeks after that, just recently, I finally got my Wave 2 figure. So it has been, like I said, a long, rocky road. People that got their Lion-O from Mattel, originally, it's been years between getting the main good guy before they're finally getting the main villain. And uh, I'm sure a lot of fans are happy to finally have them in hand. I'm pretty stoked with all these figures. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the quality of them. They are kind of expensive. These things are about, and they've gone up since Wave 1 came out. I think when Wave 1 came out, they were $40, $45. Now they're like $50, $55 American. And I'm in Canada, so when you do the conversion, you know, they're about 75 bucks plus shipping. Um, so yeah, they're quite expensive for a six inch figure, closer to seven inches, I suppose, but you're like, you know, 75 bucks, that's, uh, that's pretty rough because they're about the same size as like a Marvel Legend. They come with about the same amount of accessories. There's a lot of like, say, G.I. Joe classified figures. And they're more than, uh, you know, they cost me more than double the, the cost. So, yeah, you really got to be a fan of these figures to kind of invest in them, which is why I have so few. So out of four waves of four, I only have four figures. And I think that's where I'm going to draw the line. Um, these guys are all really cool figures. Um, this guy made my best of list last year. I was very impressed with them. Um, but even still, as great as they are, they can't convince me to, uh, to go any deeper in the line because I just don't have any nostalgic ties to these characters. Oh, and I, So I just said I had four figures. Um, I know I mentioned I pre-ordered two figures from Wave 2, so Mumra and Tigra. But um, this is another issue I have is Super 7 does... You know, they give us some really good quality figures, but sometimes they miss the mark. Um, I have not felt per personally like burned by their stuff, but I know other people have, and sometimes they get a lot of hate online for sometimes not delivering what they promise. Like not just taking too long, which I I can understand. I don't get mad when things take longer than they expected. 
But when they present you a prototype and say, this is basically what you're going to buy, you pay for it, two years go by, and they send you something that's lesser, it's not quite what you were expecting, that's really disappointing. And uh, I know some of the figures they've put out have been pretty disappointing to some folks. And with Tigra, I was on the fence with ordering him in the first place because he was not one of like my favorite-looking characters, but I thought the prototype looked so good. But when people started getting the real figure in hand and I was seeing pictures of him online, I really did not care for him. The colors were way off. The oranges were way too bright. And I thought, you know what? For 30 bucks, I would buy this figure all day long. But for 75 bucks, no thanks. So I canceled my pre-order kind of at the last minute and got rid of that figure. So anyway, I've got these two. So I have opened these figures up because I have had them for a little while now. But here's the box. And the boxes are worth showing you because they are very cool. Um, it's in line with all of Super 7's Ultimate figures. Um, very nice presentation. But honestly, if they could kind of maybe cheap out on the box a little bit, um, I'd be happy if they could shave like 10 bucks off of the price and just, just give me a standard blister card or something because I don't really know what to do with these boxes. It seems they're, they're too nice to like throw out, but I've got a huge stack of them piling up in the corner of my room now because I buy Thundercats Ultimates and Conan Ultimates and now I'm getting Transformer Ultimates, G.I. Joe Ultimates, Thundercats Ultimates. It's just getting to the point where it's crazy, but um, so I think I'm going to have to throw these boxes out. So anyway. They look really nice. You get that nice kind of reflective. That's the logo for the bad guys with the two snakes. The good guys have a different logo. Um, on the back, you get the Thundercats title or whatever you want to say. Uh, and then you slide it out. And that's where the figure would be. Now you can see I popped this guy out of the box. But I did take some video of him inside the box. So I'll do a little cutaway here. But very cool, you get to see the main figure as well as all of the different accessories. So this here is Monkey Inn from Wave 4. So this is one of the henchmen. On the back of the box, you get uh, some nice artwork with a little bio. So very cool. Uh, I'm undecided. I tend to like to keep like file cards and stuff on my figures. Like even the G.I. Joes I had when I was a kid in the 80s. I kept a lot of the full cards, like you're seeing here behind me, but on a lot of them I just cut the little file card off the back, the little bio. So if I am to throw out these boxes, I don't know, maybe I'll keep the back panel or something just so I have that art and that little bio. I don't know. I'd like to keep them, I just don't have room. But anyway, so that's Monkey Inn. We'll take a look at him outside of the box in a second. Now this other one, this is Mumra. And... These boxes are pretty big anyway, but this guy is a real beast. So if you've gotten any of the Ultimates figures before, whether it's Ninja Turtles, Conan, whatever, this is usually the box you can expect to get. Some of the larger figures have come in a little bit larger boxes, like with the Ninja Turtles, Bebop and Rocksteady's box were like a little bit thicker than the other Turtles and stuff. But this one here, this is really big, and I think you can see the difference there. Um, this figure was more expensive than the standard figures, because uh, he's got a lot more bulk and girth to him. Plus he comes with kind of an extra little bonus character. So we'll take a look at all that in a second. But again, so since he's a bad guy, he's got that same reflective snake crest, which looks very cool. Got the same logo on the back. And if we slide it off, that's where you would see your figure. But of course I've popped the figure and all of the accessories out of there. Um, but I'll put in a little insert here of the figure inside the packaging. So you can see there that it's, you've got a pretty big figure in there as well as lots of little accessories like an alternate head, alternate hands, and, uh, yeah, and his little dog sidekick as well. So, um, looking at the packaging, he, he has some really cool artwork on the back as well. It's a very cool image, very brief little bio. But uh, yeah, very nice stuff. Very cool boxes. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough about boxes and whatnot. So why don't we uh, flip things around and take a look at the figures in detail. So here is Monkey In from Wave 4 outside of the packaging. And as you can see, he's pretty incredible looking. So a ton of great sculpted detail on that face. The paint works really nice. Although I am just noticing I've got a bit of a splotch on his eye. He does have one eye larger than the other, but I think that's 
maybe kind of intentional with the character. He looks kind of crazy in a lot of the artwork and stuff. But yeah, that eye splotch isn't, isn't great. But whatever, not a big deal. But, you know, I like how his inside of his mouth is painted red. All his teeth are painted. The sculpt on the hair here is great. Now he's got the hair sculpted all over his body. It is kind of an interesting design how the front of him, he almost looks like bare chested. Like, I guess that would be kind of like short brown fur on his chest. But then you see how it just switches to the furrier white hair on his back. It's kind of interesting. Then he's got like this loin cloth here, which is like soft good, so you can move that a little bit so it doesn't hinder his movement. Now this is kind of an interesting piece, and again, I'm not that familiar with the characters, but like he's got this weird belt thing that wraps around one leg. So he's got this strap here, which is a separate, like it doesn't, it's not removable, but it feels like a separate piece. Like you can see it's not like attached to his leg, but it seems to be glued in place. This one here, I don't know if it's removable in any way. It seems to be attached to his loincloth and wraps right around his foot. There doesn't seem to be any way to remove that. It's kind of an interesting design choice. Kind of keeps him asymmetrical and interesting looking. Now for articulation, I'm not really going to go over that. Um, I think people are pretty bored with hearing about articulation. But trust me when I say he moves very well. He's got uh, all the standard articulation you've come to expect. In these Ultimates figures, you know, it's not really cutting edge. Um, you know, some people would say they're actually a little dated because they are using basically that same Masters of the Universe buck from 2009. So they don't have double jointed knees or elbows or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it depends on how poseable you really need your figures to be. I think, uh, you know, I think these figures are great articulation wise. I really don't think I need any more than that. But, uh, you know, I guess that'll depend on your personal preference. Uh, for accessories, so you see I've got him holding his uh, ball and chain, which has a real metal chain here. So I think that's really cool. That's definitely how I'm going to display him on my shelf. He also has this big cannon. Now it's just one big solid color. It's kind of a bluish gray. It looks very cartoony the way it's painted. And uh, I don't know, I assume it's cartoon accurate. I don't know if this is the gun that this particular character uses in the show but uh, anyway it's a cool looking gun regardless he also has this shield which is pretty cool it has that like kind of golden monkey face in the front there and you can see how it's got the little handle in the back so he can hold that pretty easily as long as you've got him displayed with his gripping hands and speaking of hands so he does have some extra hands uh, I've only got three in front of me. Is that all he came with? Which is kind of odd. Usually you expect them to come in pairs. So I don't know if I just kind of misplaced one or maybe he only came with three. But you can see currently I have him displayed with uh, semi-closed hands so he can hold weapons with those. This is more of a clawing, scraping hand. So I don't know if you could really hold an accessory with that. But, uh, but yeah, that's a cool hand anyway. You can maybe hold an item in his hand if you're holding it that way. And then the other two hands, I'm not really sure what the difference between this hand and the hand I've got him displayed with are. Maybe slightly uh, tighter or looser grips. So maybe one works for the mace, the other works for the gun. I'm not really sure. And then this is another kind of more clawed, like scraping hand for the other side. So there you go. And then the last accessory he has to show you is the alternate head. So I think it's great when these figures come with alternate heads so you've got different display options. And uh, these are really nice ones. I find sometimes they give you heads which are a little too specific. It's maybe from one specific scene in the cartoon. Um, like I see that happening a lot with the G.I. Joe Ultimates that are coming out. Like uh, some of the characters have... Um, I'm trying to think. Like Destro is an example. He's got one head where he's got like hot wax dripping over his face or something and like who is going to display that figure in their collection with hot wax like it seems a little bit overkill but just because it happened in the show doesn't mean you need a, a head like that with your action figure but when it comes to a character like monkey and i really like that they have given him this kind of more neutral standard face and then you've got more of his enraged attack face here 
Now, mind you, they could have maybe just given him a hinged jaw and maybe that would have made that redundant. But if for some reason they felt that that wasn't going to work, might have, you know, hindered the look of the figure. Like another Ultimates figure that they've got coming out, which I'm still on the fence if I'm going to get, is Godzilla. And their Godzilla figure has two different heads, one with his mouth closed and one with it open. Which I guess if that's all they can give us, I think it's cool that they gave us both options. Although with Godzilla, I would prefer just to have a Godzilla with a hinged jaw that I can open and close his mouth. Um, you know, there are plenty of other companies like NECA that have been able to do that with Godzilla. So I don't know why Super 7 couldn't. But uh, either way, I like both of these heads. I'm not sure which one I'm going to display him with. I think I kind of like the, the yelling head, which is different for me. Usually I like the more neutral expressions. But with him being this kind of big ape character, I think the yelling face kind of works. Now before I move on to the other figure, maybe I'll just show you a little bit size-wise how this guy compares. So here he is next to Lionel. He's about the same height. He's maybe a smidge taller, especially, you know, if uh, considering Lionel's hair, get, add some height to him. So I'd say Monkey is definitely a taller character. And that seems like it would have probably been true of the show. So I would say these guys are in scale. Now, mind you, I'm not a Thundercat expert. So if you're a big fan and I'm wrong about that, I apologize. But And then the other character I have here is Slythe. Now you can see he's a much bigger, thicker character. Um, he's got a lot of weight to him. But he's kind of like a hunchback character. So size-wise, I think that's appropriate as well. They all look pretty good. And then just one last thing I'll bring in here is I mentioned how these guys are compatible with your Masters of the Universe Classics characters. So here he is next to the Classics Merman. So you can see size-wise, style-wise, I think they fit in pretty well together. So if you're the type of guy that can, you know, that doesn't mind merging his collections together, I think these guys look really sharp together on a shelf. Now here is Mumra, the ever-living outside of the packaging. And before I talk about him, I do just want to quickly say that I found Monkeen's other hand, so he did indeed come with four extra hands. Anyway, on to Mumra. So this guy is big. So right off the bat, um, let's show you how big he is. So you already saw how much larger the box was, um, but that can be a little deceiving. But if I bring Monkey in back in here and display him next to Mumra, you can see just how tall Mumra is. Bring Lionel back in here too. And yeah, it really looks like Mumra would kick Lionel's ass if you ask me. Um, I don't remember how accurate this is. I assume it is since Super 7 bothered to make him this large. He must have been. But uh, yeah, from my childhood recollections, I don't necessarily remember him being so huge. Um, now Mumra did transform in the cartoon. He had kind of like a weak old man, kind of like a, a mummy. Um, he was all frail and kind of hunched over. And that version of Mumra they actually made in wave one of these figures and he's a pretty cool looking figure too but again where I'm not a huge Thundercats fan if I was going to get one Mumra uh, I didn't want to get the small frail one I wanted to get the post transformation Mumra into the ever living Mumra is what they call this guy and so yeah I was holding out hope that they would make him eventually and sure enough they announced him in wave two and uh, yeah, this guy's great. And I think he was worth the weight. Really solid figure. So I barely have enough room to get this huge figure on my desk here. But so let's bring him up close and take a look at him. So really cool detail on the face there. You can see his nose is kind of tucked away behind this helmet. His teeth. I assume they're painted that way on purpose. Like you might say, oh, is he, you know, is that paint error? Um, even if it is, I think it actually looks pretty cool the way he's kind of like missing his teeth. It looks like some of them are maybe shattered or something. He's got some jagged teeth and I think that looks pretty cool. Um, the helmet, he's got the snakes there and even the snakes have some nice painted detail. You see they got purple bodies, black heads, and then little white eyes painted on them. And he's got all these, I guess we just call them ribbons, kind of flowing from his helmet. So it really looks like he's almost in like mid-action pose. Like I think when he transformed in the cartoon, you know, all of his things would kind of blow out like this. And so 
yeah, it looks like he's almost in a gust of wind with all of his ribbons or tassels blown off his helmet. And it looks uh, looks pretty cool. Now, like Monkey, and he has this kind of strap around him, which looks like it could be removable, but at the same time, not easily. Like this piece of plastic, it's not just one long, skinny piece of white plastic. You can see here, it kind of like it appears to attach around his neck, which if you pop his head off, you could probably pop that off. But then if we follow it around, you see here it's it turns into kind of like a double piece of plastic that wraps around him. Like I don't think it's intended to be removed. And okay, this is a separate piece. I actually wasn't sure if this wrapping on his arm was attached or not. Um, that's a separate piece of, uh, I think that's like the remnants of his mummy bandages when he uh, is an old frail man and he kind of bursts out of the bandages. He has some of the bandages left over around his ankles there as well. So yeah, very cool. I love the look of this guy. Um, I'm not sure how to describe this guy. He's just like a standard 80s villain. Like Skeletor didn't make a whole lot of sense. He had a skull head on a big muscle bound body. This guy here with a name like Mumra. So I know he starts off as a little frail mummy, but then he turns into this. Like, I don't know, he's kind of like a demon looking thing. And yet he's got these hairy feet. Um, it's, you know, there's no hair on him anywhere else. That's kind of just a weird design element. Uh, he's got that snake logo kind of like tattooed on his chest. I don't know, just a lot of great design work, a lot of great paint work. You can see here the different shades of gold here on his cuffs. He's got the gold trim on his skirt, for lack of a better term. Um, yeah, again, I'm not going to go over the articulation with him either, but you can kind of see it just from looking at him. Uh, his hands are articulated, you know, his elbows. So single jointed elbows, single jointed knees. He's got the ankle articulation. Um, oh, he's going commando under there by the looks of things. Uh, he's got a nice ab crunch. So you get some good movement out of him there. And yeah, his head. There's limited movement a little bit because he's got this big kind of, I don't know what to call that, skirt on the back of his helmet. So that hinders his movement somewhat. Uh, you can't really look up and down, just side to side. But if you want to have him look down, you can just do the ab crunch, I guess. Doesn't really go back at all. So you can only kind of move forward with the ab crunch. But yeah, really solid figure. Um, for accessories, he's got quite a few. So he has got four alternate hands as well. So you can see this is how he came in the packaging with the closed fists in each hand. So he has got the, uh, you know, the, kind of the slightly open grip. So that way he can hold his weapons. And then he also has these kind of clawing hands like monkey in head. They might even be the same... Same hands as Monkey in? Let's see. Not the same, because Monkey has got those like hairs sculpted on the back, which Mummer doesn't have. But it's you know pretty pretty much the same type of grip. Now he has a couple of weapons. I don't know what this is. Um, I don't know if he just carries this like a scepter. Again, you'll have to forgive me. I know nothing about the Thundercats. I haven't followed it at all since I was a kid, and even then, just barely. Like, I've never followed the lore at all beyond the initial cartoons when they first aired. So, yeah, when it comes to weapons and stuff like this, I really don't know. But it's a neat-looking thing. Then he also has this really big double-bladed sword. Uh kind of looks like these come apart. I think they actually mean, were they apart? I don't know. These might come apart into two separate pieces, um, but I don't want to mess with it. Um, but yeah, you can see they've got these snake heads sculpted on them. But yeah, they're very big weapons. Like this thing displayed next to him. It's, it's really, it's really big. So very cool. Um, he has an alternate head as well. So like Monkey in, he has kind of a more, I guess we'll call this a neutral face, although he still looks pretty pissed off. And then he has this kind of maniacal laughing face. Which, uh, again, I'm hard-pressed to say which one I'll want to display him with. 
uh, on my shelf. They're both pretty great. At a glance, I think I'm kind of liking the laughing face here, so maybe I'll go with that. But yeah, both very, very cool. Uh, then he has, this is a really cool accessory. So this is basically a whole other character that he comes packaged with. This is his little uh, dog, Mammut. And uh, yeah, so a lot of nice character and detail, lots of paint detail. So he's getting, you can see his eyes. He's got a nice wash there to bring out some of the wrinkles on his forehead, um, his head turns his legs are articulated just one joint per leg that's a very odd little tail that he has there that is not articulated in any way so yeah very weird looking and yeah i don't remember what this guy's deal is but mumra has a dog and i think it's pretty cool considering the size of this figure and everything like it's a, it's a good sized dog and you know it's got five points for articulation like that is a nice little piece and you get that kind of as a little bonus in here with the figure because I think just the size of this figure alone justifies the uh, bigger price point over the other figures. But yeah, then to get a whole other character in there is, uh, is really sweet. And now the last accessory in here, which I have not really had a chance to try out myself yet, is this cloak. So you can see it's kind of this Dracula-like cloak. It's red on one side and black on the other. And it's got a wire in it, so you can kind of sculpt it and it will hold its shape, which is kind of cool. So there's a wire that runs along the top, along the side. And is it on the bottom too? No. So just, there is one in the middle though too. So down this seam. And let's see, yeah, there's, so there's three seams. So you see there, there's, three seams as well as a wire that runs the whole kind of the top and sides so there's lots of posability in this thing and you notice there's holes there and hole there so how this is supposed to work is you're going to pop his hands off and his head off and you clip these over the pegs and then you should be able to give him a nice dracula like cape so that is pretty cool so i haven't tried that yet i'm going to try it now I'm going to do it off camera because if you watched my last video, I was a little hasty when I tried to replace one of my Action Force guys heads and I actually snapped the peg off and I'm still a little heartbroken over that. So I'm going to do this very delicately and then I'll come back and I'll show you what he looks like with his cape on. So here is Mumra with his cape on. And before I put it on, I wanted to just quickly check a reference photo online to make sure I was putting it on the right way because I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be black side in or red side in. So the photo I found shows him with the black side in and the red side out. Um, but when I went to look that up, I also found a, a description of the box contents. So not only do I have Mumra and Mamut, but it describes these accessories. So this thing here is apparently called the Mighty Gyroscope Regulator. Okay. And this thing here, this is the Extended Sword of Plundar. So I'm sure that's not news to you Thundercats fans. I'm sure you knew what those were called. But at least now I know what they're called. So you can see he looks pretty great when he's got his, uh, his cape on. Now since I had to change his head and hands, in order to get his cape on, I decided to put on some different ones. So instead of the closed fists, I've given him one of his kind of clawed hands and one of his gripping hands. And I've also given him his laughing head. So one thing I will make note of is his hands, they came off very easily. Like it doesn't take much. Now this one's a little better, but this one here I found came out like, just like you barely have to touch it. And that was before I even uh, added the cape. But now that it's got a little bit of that material, now it seems even less likely to stay on. So that's a little bit of an issue. You don't want his hands falling off, especially holding an accessory. Given the weight of the accessory, you can see how it just kind of, his hand just wants to kind of come right out. So that's not great. But anyway, same as if I were, if I were to display him with this uh, gyroscope thing, I would probably want to have him holding it here rather than just on the end. But you can see how tight that grip is. Um, I think you'd probably better take a hair dryer to that 
before you try and pry his fingers open to get him to hold it there. I wouldn't want to try and force the issue, especially after my action force uh, debacle last week. So anyway, that's like that. The head came off pretty easy as well. I was a little scared. I'm not sure if this one really locked in place, but uh, it seems to be on there pretty good. So from the back, there he is. And so like, yeah, if you want to display the wire, you can kind of have this cape flowing a little bit more and it will hold its shape because of those wires. So yeah, very cool. I'm really impressed with this figure. I like monkey in, um, but I love Mumra here. And the only issue I really have is the fact that his hand is kind of loose, but otherwise I think he looks great. Paint wise, sculpting, accessory wise, all that stuff. Yeah, I think uh, Super 7 really nailed him. Um, so yeah, what else is there to be said before we move on? We've already done the size comparison, so you know how big he is here next to the other characters. I guess I could bring old, old Merman back in here for a second in case you want to see him next to a Masters of the Universe Classics. Um, so yeah, very tall. Definitely very intimidating on your shelf. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super impressed. I like this guy a lot. Um, I definitely think this guy is a contender for my best of the year list. And, you know, we're pretty much halfway through the year now. So, yeah, there's only been a handful of figures that I thought were uh, real contenders. And, yeah, this guy is definitely one of them. Really solid figure. So there you go. There's Mumra. So that was my review of my latest Thundercats Ultimates figures from Super 7. Mumra from Wave 2 and Monkey Inn from Wave 4. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Please leave me some comments below. That's always very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. I will see you soon with another video. Until then, ciao.